Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is part 23 in my series on learning to fly for beginners in X-Plane. And this is going to be on turns around a point. Turns around a point is a maneuver you must be able to perform in order to get your private pilot certificate. This is Google Maps in the Reading area. This is Highway 5. And the power plant that I talked about in that other video is right here. And what I did in real life was we kind of flew down to this area here. And if we zoom in, you can see it's a nice wide open field here. And right here is a little tree and this little area here. And this would be a very safe place to do these maneuvers because we will be flying out here and we won't be flying over any buildings or homes or anything. This would be very safe and any area around here would be a possible landing site if we had an emergency. And here is that same area in X-Plane. This is the overhead view of that area and this is what it looks like when you have Ortho for X-Plane installed. You get a really nice picture of the scenery here. And here's our little tree right here in that area. And to use this area, we would mark off our little spot here. So here's our point and here's our area we're going to fly around. We're about three quarters of a mile out, so half a mile to three quarters. And the other thing is we would enter downwind. So if the wind was coming out of the north, then we would enter on the downwind, this is heading south, and then we would enter our turns, and that's how we would do it. But we're not going to do that here. We're going to do something different, and the reason is it's just too difficult to actually see your results on the map and X-Plane when we use a spot like this. So I just wanted to show you how we do this in real life, but for this video, we're going to do something well, you really normally wouldn't do, but it'll help you when you're trying to do this in X-Plane. So to make this easier for you to see how well you do, we are going to do turns around a VOR. Now, this is crazy. You would never do this in real life. There's just way too much traffic here. And look at this, we're right on top of an airport. However, it shows up right here on the map. And as you can see, I've already done one loop around this. You can see how well you've done. And you actually have mileage here. You can determine if you're within the range you want to be. So we're going to use this Reading VOR for this procedure only because it's going to help you when you look at your results. So before we start, the first thing you need to do is do some clearing turns. We do S turns to make sure there's no other traffic around when you're doing this area. If you're going for your real private pilot certificate, if you don't do the performing clearing turns, you're going to flunk right off the bat. Very important. Make sure there's no traffic around. Okay. The other thing, you need to have an emergency landing area. Know where you're going to set the airplane down if something goes wrong. We're going to be flying between 800 and 1,000 feet above ground level, AGL, and you don't have a lot of time if things don't go well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, as I mentioned earlier, is we're going to enter downwind one half to three quarters of a mile, a beam the point. So that's going to be right over here. We are going to be at an altitude between 800 and 1,000 feet AGL. And to be successful here, we have to maintain our airspeed of plus or minus 10 knots and maintain an altitude of plus or minus 100 feet. And then another little restriction, never bank more than 45 degrees. That'll fail you right off the bat. So these are kind of the things they expect when you're doing this, when you're trying to get your private pilot certificate. So let's see how well we can do here. All right, we're set up for our downwind. So the winds are out of the north at 10 knots. Let's take a look at the map. So here we are. This is the Reading VOR. 
and we're a mile or so out. We're going to fly down here when we are a beam, the VOR station. We will start our turn. All right, let's take a look at the overhead view here of the airport. And our VOR is right here in the middle. And we are going to be coming in from the north. So that means we're going to be out here somewhere heading this way, heading on a course of 180, our downwind course to enter. And here is our path that we want to fly. This is roughly three quarters of a mile out. Now, the thing that you want to do when you're flying this procedure is have ground references. This will really help you. And one way to do that is to visually mark off 90 degree angles. So as we're coming here and we are now a beam our point, we look for a spot out here that we want to fly to. And we see we have a road and we have some trees. So we want to be going inside this area right over these trees. And as we cross this point, we're looking at this other point over here. And that's right near the end of this road. So now we start banking and turning towards that road. When we get to this point, we'll be looking at this point right here, this taxiway. So we'll continue turning at the taxiway. And then here we're going to be looking at the buildings and looking at these reference marks too as we come. This is a nice way to visually help you stay where you need to be, which is a constant radius of between a half a mile and three quarters of a mile as you travel around the point. Now you want to keep it the same. You don't want to be three quarter of a mile and then a half a mile and then three quarter of a mile like that. No, you want to maintain wherever you start. If you're at three quarters of a mile out here, you want to be three quarters of a mile out all the way around. Now this is going to be a little more difficult when you find your remote area, a safe place to do this, and you determine where you want to start your turns around a point. Here's our little point here. There's not a whole lot of reference on the ground, so you want to look for a place that has roads. So here we got roads on three sides. So these are nice reference points. We got some trees here and some trees here. So you just when you're looking for a spot, make sure that you have some really good reference points so you can get yourself around here and maintain that constant radius. Now remember, we got winds. So you can't just set your bank angle and hope that you stay there with that 10 knot wind blowing. If you were to do that, it would just make your nice perfect little circle just head south. So we will constantly be changing the bank angle. We'll have to adjust power. All these things will be necessary. We're going to be working everything here to maintain altitude and speed. It's a lot of work. You are always doing something in this maneuver. All right, here we go. Now this part of the video is going to be a little hard to follow because I need to be changing where I'm looking all the time. So I'm going to be looking at the VOR. I'm going to be looking at our reference points on the ground. I'll be looking outside for other traffic. So this is kind of what it's going to be like in real life. Your eyes are always moving. Always. And you'll notice that in here. I'm not going to sit and focus on the VOR or my next point. I'm looking, 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 and that'll really stand out in this part of the video. We're at 1,500 feet. I'm going to get down to 100 knots, try to maintain 100 knots when we get there. So let's get started. Climbing a bit. Let's get back down there. Okay. Want to slow down. So we're going to know we're a beam, of course when we find that VOR right out here on the tip of our wing. <clears throat> All right, there's point seven. We're going to call that where we want to be. Now, as soon as we get a beam here, we're going to start turning. And that's right there. So now we're turning. Now we're going downwind, so we need to be turning pretty good here because that wind is pushing us. We want to be on the inside of this road. We want to be looking for those landmarks. 
So then we're going to go back and look at our VOR, which is right there. And we're going to go back over here. Next, we want to be on the inside of this road. So we're just going to keep turning. And keep that VOR right in that spot. Let's go back. And there's the road. We're going to be right inside that road. Let's go back to our spot. So now as we're going upwind and we're getting out of the downwind, we don't need to bank as much. So we can cut the bank angle down. We're just inside the road. And our VOR is right there, so we're doing pretty good. Now we're going to be looking for our other spot, which is right up in here. So we're going to go inside these buildings right along that inside this area here. Remember this taxiway? So we're just going to keep turning towards that taxiway, keeping that VOR right here. Now on this side we're going to have less angle because the wind is going to be pushing us towards the VOR. So we're going to flatten out our turn and we're going to be looking at these other spots, these buildings here. Those are the buildings out there. We're just going to keep turning and looking to get outside these buildings, right? Just on the outside of these buildings. Let's go back over here. Now during all this time we should be looking for other traffic too. We should be paying attention to what's going on all the time. All right, here's the buildings coming up. We want to be just on the outside of those buildings. And again, we got the VOR right off the tip of the wing. And there's the buildings. We're going to pass over them. And now we're going to look out ahead for our road. Let's take another look at the VOR right where it needs to be. and there's the road. So let's stop right here and let's take a look. Well here's our map and you can see the flight path here. Not great, not horrible. I've drawn a line here through the center here because what we have up here is the upwind portion and the downwind portion. So when we're on the downward portion of our path we're going to have more and more bank angle as we get here because we need to cut the turn a little sharper because the wind is going to be pushing us away from our point. And as we come around towards the upwind, just the opposite will happen. We're going to start to level off our wings a little bit because we don't have to fight the wind so much. And then as we work our way up, it's less and less because now the winds are pushing us towards our point. So we have a less and less bank angle as we come up this way. And then the same thing happens as we start going down. Less and less and more and more. So as you can see we're constantly changing our bank angle. But that's not all. As we come on our downward side we're going to need to crab into the wind here to hold this or maintain this distance from our point. And the same is true up here. We still need to be crabbing. And obviously we need less power as we're doing the downwind and more power for the upwind to maintain speed of 100 knots. So that's pretty much it. Now you're going to want to go around maybe two or three times when you're doing this. And if you're going for your PPL, well, he might actually have you go in the other direction also. So you may have to make right turns and left turns when you're doing this maneuver. So the first thing you need to do is find a nice safe place to perform this maneuver. Remote area with not a whole lot of stuff to get in your way and a safe place to land. Now when you first try this I suggest you don't have any wind. And don't pay any attention to maintaining the altitude or the speed. Just get used to flying around this point, getting a bank angle, and see how well you can do without these other things to deal with. After you're comfortable making this trip around your point and you feel pretty good and it looks really good, then add the winds and deal with that. And then start paying attention to maintaining altitude and the speed. So if you progress along this way I think you'll find it a lot easier to perform this maneuver.
So that's it for this video on the basics of turns around the point. If you want more information, I suggest you go to the FAA.gov website and download their information. And get the chapter on ground reference maneuvers. Here you'll find an awful lot of information on the different ground reference maneuvers that you should know about. Here you'll find turns around a point, which we just did, and another procedure, which I will be doing another video on at some point, S-turns, where you cross over a road. So that's coming up later on. And that's it for the basics on turns around a point. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you have a comment, that would be great. Thanks again for watching. And God bless.